See, that's a good announcement. Strong. <laughs> All right, we're all good. We're all set. Okay, so I'll call the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to, to order. First item is roll call. Michael Kane. I'm here. El Zad. Here. Lou Sutherland. Here. Steve Huchai. Here. Kevin Pinto. Here. Yep. So we have a, all our members are present. Another quorum. Next item is uh, approval of minutes of the previous meetings. We have a September 27th minutes. I have to uh, accept the motion for approval. So moved. So moved. Is there second. a second? It's moved and seconded. Does anyone have any corrections? I did, I, I did have one. I did have one question. Um, the internal sign that we had talked about, did, did we state where that had to be? Yes. It's in the minutes. In the motion. At the Yetter Road entrance. That's it. Yeah. The second one. That reads farm entrance only, Do and then an internal sign. An internal sign that reads farm access only. We were thinking of on page two. Yeah, because um, uh, I had a comment on that. Well, actually, he says I, he agrees with the recommendation. You need to put the sign. He agrees. I'm on the, the, the internal and internal sign shall be installed, stating farm access only shall be installed within 90 days. Where? The other road exit. Is it referring to the previous sign? It, it is, but it, we can put that in there if you like. Okay. It almost, when I first read it, it almost sounded like it was another sign. There are two signs. There's an in and an out. There is two signs. Okay. So that's the same location. The same driveway. The same driveway. driveway. One's on the other road and it's one in the Thanks. Okay. Okay. This is. And real nit, page five at the top. Um, right in the second line, it says he stated there are wetlands on the property, and approval has already been received from the Inland Wetland Commission. Did they technically give an approval? Because I understand they said no permit required, and I was wondering for the ledges. This is for some page five. Which, yeah, that's right. Which section? Yeah, that's Where ledges. I'm sorry, it's ledges too. Yeah, right. Yes, they did grant a permit, but it says here. Well, that was my question. It says approval has already been received. If you say no permit is required, is that considered an approval? No, but they did grant a, a yeah, permit on also, this particular one. On this particular, they site. said, oh, okay. oh, they did. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. I had a couple more. Anyone else have anything? I had a couple. On page two, at the very bottom of the, it's not the very last paragraph, but the last full paragraph in the last sentence, he, it reads, he agrees with the recommendation of the sign being added to Yetta Road. I thought we should indicate there. That is for um, the sign for uh, entry only or something to that effect. Could be added. Because it didn't say what it was for. For farm. For farm, for farm, for farm use. I yeah. guess that's what it was. Yeah. I can't read my own. Yeah. Yeah, farm use on farm entry or farm use on or something like that. Because there are two signs in. And on page four at the very bottom, three lines up from the bottom. I think uh, in the middle of that sentence it says between the currents. I think it should be current, not as 
the moment for yes. On page five, on the third, third paragraph, it starts off uh, Leib and Sistro, and it doesn't have a verb in that sentence. And I think, oh, oh, yeah. and I think the word, the way to solve that is get rid of the period after that and get rid of she. Mm -hmm. So it says companies review the own sign. And down a bit further on that paragraph. Line, line eight, it reads, each unit has own self-maintained mechanical system. I think it would be better if it just says, as a self. It would have changed the word on to a. Mm -hmm. That was all I had. A lot of text on this. <laughs> Anyone have anything else to change? Not, uh, and we'll vote on approval of the minutes as amended. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried unanimously. Next, we have uh, communications. We received this uh, package from Deep to send my package over the water connection. On that one, it doesn't require any action in this message. I don't know whether anybody has any concerns with it, whether we need to discuss it further in our meeting or and add it to the agenda or just leave it as is. I think I believe it's for information only. This is a block utility. It's the one that yeah. Yeah, connects the ground right. utilities to the uh, gold water. Oh, oh, right. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Mystic champagne. Yeah, I was wondering if this was a mystic champagne. Or... It is. It's mystic champagne. It's the interconnection. It's the interconnection at the bottom of ice. Well, it's, well, it's, well, it's a requirement for us to review. Even though I don't know what. We're no. Doing. It's it's just a notification. I, All the news commissions received this I, notification. I think we reviewed it when it was first done. This is a renewal of an application. I remember having a discussion on that. Yeah, it's being it, all it is is a reissue, and it sounded like the state statute has requires the applicant to send it to the zone planning and zoning commissions in both Groton and Stonington. So that's why we have. So if nobody has any reason to. Discuss it. I was hoping someone's going to show up. I have a lot of questions, <laughs> quite honestly, because <laughs> it's saying they do a million gallons a day. So you can have three hundred and sixty-five million a year and twenty-five cents a gallon. I was I like, don't think so. and we're, this is a ten-year permit and a global warming. <laughs> Like, like, I don't know. Well, it just, yeah. I, I don't have a good feel for what it, their capacity is. And this comes up with data centers and everything else. It's like, what? Wow, they can pump. Million dollars and I mean, million gallons and ship it out, you know. Well, they have, a, they have surplus, <laughs> day. surplus pass, so they don't need it. But it's, it's like the reservoir, do you look at them last part of summer and they're so low, oh, but, wow. but they still can pump out next. I just I wish I understood that. And this isn't really maybe for this application, but it would be nice to know how this all works. Can we provide more than two? <laughs> The casino, yeah, and it goes across the river. Well, it does. No, the city of water is connected to the city. They have another connection. Hmm? Yeah. Montel, or I think it's somewhere up in there. Yeah, no, there is no, one across right. the river. They, There's they, one across the river. Too. But I was curious about what their excess daily capacity is. Um, I promise I won't go on right now. I, I remember having a conversation once with 
Karen and Paul, right? And she's to think that after Pfizer stopped doing manufacturing, that the, but no, don't quote me on that. No, that's they, what it's that their use, they have a surplus. Yeah, that their water, water was. Um, An electric boat doesn't lose as much yeah. water as they used to, also. So yeah. Cut yeah. down on the, <clears throat> on the need for using right. it. So industrial, the city has extra water. Industrial use is nothing like, it's way beyond residential use. And flush the toilet so many times. If you look at page 42, that chart. Well, I couldn't figure out those charts. So. And it's only Aquarian, so it's not even really GU. But it's like, you see how the usage has tailed off over the last couple of years? Because you can see the summer was the pool, yeah, stuff right. like that. I just did my own hand drawn trend line here. <laughs> but it was like, I don't understand this. Hmm? I don't understand it, but yeah. they still need a million gallons a day and the usage is really tanking. Well, maybe maybe they had a, a spell where the wells were dry and they were running out of the water. Yeah. That's, hmm? But they're yeah, not, doesn't make any sense. they're not taking the money. How does that affect, how does this affect us? It didn't make sense. I mean, not even I mean as the planning commission or as I our, don't know that it does. I think they mentioned anything. I mean, we wouldn't have any control over it anyway, even if we didn't like what they were doing or thought that they would be wise oh, to do it another well, way. We're going to ask a question, right? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no, I think that's it'd be, not, it'd be nice one of these things to know how it operates. It's like a big black box. Yeah. It's like a dead Exactly. Well, maybe it's white. It's, it's colored white. It's colorless. <laughs> or, or if we're approving businesses that are. Water yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's probably right. a concern. We got to have enough water. Yeah, no, but we, we have no way of knowing what that is. No, it's a new business comes online. So, a new million gallons. Okay, does the utility company say they have enough? Or, say a, yes. or a large or a large housing development. We're so. mm -hmm. going to have to produce something, and whatever it is. That's how we have, we have to, to say yes. That that time. Time. Yeah. Well, but East Line is having that problem. Currently, and that they have wells, and the wells are not producing enough water. That's the problem. There's a lot of development there that's going on in there, and it, and the sewage too. They have to pump their sewage from London. It's a big <laughs> issue. For them. Yeah. I think it'd be nice to hear from Rotten Utilities what the state of the art, the state of the water. Yeah. Rotten Park. Utilities and Mystic Parking. It's a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah. If only we could produce. Uh, water like they're able to produce parking spaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone uh, have anything on, on communications? I did receive a, a notice for this downtown Mystic Resil Resiliency and Sustainability Plan. There's a public workshop scheduled. November 1st, if anybody's interested in that. No one has anything else? Does staff have anything? Does anyone in the public wish to address us tonight? You just want to listen. <laughs> Good. Okay. And we'll move down. The next item is. We have is a uh, new business zoning regulation amendments. Right. Well, I think I guess I should also indicate that I forgot to put that down. We I did receive a uh, notice from the town clerk that uh, we need uh, Property, uh, we just approved them in the uh, for uh, the farm and the uh, yeah. Yeah. so that is being appealed. The approval of that uh, special permit is being appealed. We'll move on to new business. Okay. 
So we don't have Diane. I know. Believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we're muddling through. We're going to do it. Um, so this is a continuation of a discussion that we started earlier this year about some small zoning text amendments. Um, it includes revised parking um, requirements for outdoor recreation um, in places of assembly. We found um, in reviewing plans that those parking ratios just they're they're not appropriate. Um, we've talked about larger storage requirements for multi-unit developments uh, to accommodate e-bikes or kayaks or canoes mm -hmm. or large um, recreational equipment. Um, and then we've also talked about revisions to the accessory dwelling unit regulations so that they are consistent with the legislation that was passed last year. So in your packet, um, you've got a description of of what we're going to discuss tonight, and then you've got a draft zoning text. So Tabitha's um, shared her screen so we can go through things. Um, and so the public and Kevin can see. Um, and she's going to go through the first bit of um, the parking and um, the bicycle and the e bike and, uh, and large recreational equipment and storage. Um, so what we're talking about first is section 5.1, that's the multi-unit dwellings and multi-unit dwelling conversions. So what we've done there is change the storage requirements to increase it to 200 cubic feet um, with the measurement requirements for bikes and kayak storage and for the stipulation that it would be preferable to be situated on the ground floor with a 110 volt outlet. Um, one question. Yeah, can we discuss that? Yeah, I'll just, I'm just skipping ahead. Do you want to go through the whole thing and then we can discuss it, or do you want to discuss it as we go? Just interrupt you. I just assume go. Well, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to be. Background. I, I, I want to do the whole section, just describe the section, and then you discuss the section, and then we'll go to the next section. Yes, let's do it by section. So, yeah. this is the 5.1 section. I'm just showing the pages. So, as you see under 5.1-8G, number one, storage laundry, there's been some edits. So it reads, at least 50% of the multi-unit dwellings will be provided with an individual storage area of at least 200 cubic feet per dwelling unit with a minimum dimensions of 12 feet by 4 feet by 4 feet. This storage would be located on the ground floor and must be accessible to a 110 volt electrical outlet. Um, and just to finish up here, we have under conversions, a similar note. So number nine being storage, and it would say where possible because it is conversion. Based on the existing building layout, the developer shall provide a minimum 200 cubic feet of locked storage space with a minimum dimensions of 12.5. But oh, the first one should have said 12.5, I think. It might have fallen off the page by four by four and accessible to a 110 volt outlet. And in your package, you'll see the dimensions were taken from um, drawings of those. Recreational, recreational equipment. So. It's a standard size kayak. Standard size. No, it's not. It's a, it's a mid size kayak. It's not a standard it's size at all. That's why I think that's a little fall. Okay. I mean, I had a short kayak, one of the shortest kayaks of anybody out there. It was like 10 feet. Right. If you get a sea kayak, you probably have 12 feet, you know? Yeah. And if, you, if you're really serious, you might be a little longer than that. You got these fancy Kevlar jobs or something, but. Um, and if they can even go diagonal, I don't know if that would work. For some people who have these exotic, you know, special ones, but I think for most people, and I'm sure there's some, oh, you could Google it, figure out what the average is, but even a recreational one, I think 12 feet would be a much better number than just my personal experience having um, had a million kinds. What's the, what's the actual dimensions that they're proposing? So this is just as a guide, and it was an eight foot average because i did see kayaks that were longer and i saw kayaks that were shorter so i picked one that was in the middle to um find it the unit that's being dissolved in this this kayak diagonal does work with a kayak not so much with a bike necessarily depending on if you're stacking the bikes in there but the kayak angle does work so three 12 feet is a good number but if you go point to point 12 feet then that would work well, or it's 12, you want 12.5. Right, because I was trying to meet 200 cubic. Well, you're going to have some clearance. That would be a 10 foot cut. Okay. Yeah, right, exactly. Oh, I mean, between a front. 
bottom of the stern. You can't have it. Right. It's, like, it's not. It's not like. It's plastic boat. You can you can't, you can't hold it. No, but you can't. We don't need any clearance. It does, you, will, you will put it in there tight to the back. Well, see, I think there's a problem with taking the average on kayaks because that means half the kayaks are going to set. Wow. Yeah, you're also. Yeah, the are all rental units, right? Sometimes. So yeah. what? People probably, I mean, they probably have their own wonderful kayak. They probably go to the store. No, I just, I think 12 feet would be a lot better than. 11 to swirl oh, short. Well, it says on. one of these you say 12 well, foot, 12.5 feet. You've got to have okay. 12, you got to change the 12 to 12. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it's 12.5 feet. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
Um, I don't know how that fits into a building that has eight or 10 foot ceilings. Mm -hmm. So the alternative you know I mean? is you just call out the computed footage, which is what we've done, but we didn't give a dimension. So then you can with a kayak, it. maybe it's like, no. Well, I think it does fit into a building because you said four foot high. Two of them stack up very nicely. And oh. you only have to lift things up four feet, which if you're in a kayak, it's better than something. You gotta know, lift it up to get it on top of the car. Okay. So, and same with bicycle, it's a little worse for you. Yeah, and they're not going to waste space, right? They're not going to do that. And then what kind of a door do you put on something that is 12 feet long? Because you're going to have no, to so access it from the side, right? No, it's sure. It's sure. Sure. Yeah. Like stick it in, like stick their bicycle in there so that yes. there's going to be a hole in the 12 feet back. Yes. So yes. You're not storing. I mean, if you put a bicycle in there, then we'll you're going to store it in the back of it. And you're climbing this thing. Just see, I, I'm not being, I'm just trying to imagine how it works, you know. Yeah. He thinks it'll sell better by having giving everybody a little room that he's going to hold to it. And then I get a room for the other ones. Let's give them stacks like this. At least for bicycles, I haven't seen it for time. I do have a question on it, it also has to be powered. Yeah. 110 outlet. They, uh, you know, they have been seen in the news more and more about these um, bike fires. You know, the e bikes aren't exactly crafted as well as cars are. And, um, you know, they've had some battery fires. I don't know. I'm just a little leery of making that a requirement. And, you don't think it's a phase we're going through? I, I, I don't know about all of them, but I know my son has one, and the battery is actually removed. You take it off and charge it. You bring them back because the battery is the most expensive part. Somebody you know, charge I have one that you charge it one that like is made to be charged. You take it out. And charge but we're imagining this outlet inside this well, box, right? Well, it's accessible to. So, accessible to be on the other side of the room. You won't be able to charge your bikes overnight or something. It can't be on the other side of the room someplace, and that would be accessible. Within six feet is accessible, and it's doesn't work. And it's can a regulation be written that would say something like, "You must be able to demonstrate that a kayak, like one kayak per four apartments, or something like that." Just I'm just making a number, or one bicycle per, you know. 0.75 bicycles storage indoor secured storage space. Can you do that? Is that safe, or do you? Or you're more comfortable making actual? No, I mean you definitely can, and that gives you know the design over to the person who's who's designing the building. You know that you, know, you have to demonstrate that 50 percent are able able to have you know storage for large recreational vehicles. Uh, recreational equipment such as da 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 da, you have minimum of 200 square feet, um, and just kind of give them the parameters, and then yeah. they can, you know, present to you that they meet that, that like regulation. I, I actually like that. Yeah, because I, I don't know how to figure it out. Yeah. In fact, I was going to suggest that maybe we call like I, I was going to I was thinking Brian Kent because he's a bicycle enthusiast and he's like a designer or something like that. I would ask him what he yeah. thought. But it might be, um, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable 100% trying to like figure it out. No, it's going to be a long, short time. Yeah. yeah. And then a something long, gets stuck in. Stuck oh, in. Cool. Not just bikes. Well, it doesn't have to be. And I, maybe there's someone else. I just thought of him this yeah. afternoon. Yeah. And was like, oh. yeah. Manufactured bicycle lockers. Very often they're not rectangular. They're, they're pie cut. Oh. And you, you address them both ends and they fit into each other. Interesting. And because bicycle is not a pointy in the front, so they just don't take advantage of that. And, and, and like the other thing that I know is like say if I put an elevator in a house, five foot by five foot square, you need space outside of the elevator that you have to dedicate to that as well. It's not just like you know, because something like this, right, it takes up a hallway, or there's, you've got to be able to now pull that 12 foot mm -hmm. kayak out. Mm -hmm. And 
maneuver it, right? So you need almost 12 feet beyond that to get it out of that box, I think. How much of a design parameters do you want to put in? That's why I'm wondering if we can't well, just- Because if they put this thing in the basement and want to rent it, yeah. they're going to want people to be able to use it. Right. Yeah. So, so you could just say, you know, for use of bicycle storage or kayaks. That's right. And if it's for use, then they must figure out how to be able to. You know, it's a general. Yeah. 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 So I have racks for bicycles, but then racks. I actually yeah. have one big storage area that weighs two big percent of the unit. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. That's, I would be I don't comfortable. Think. comfortable. And, and I don't know how you craft it or how you do it, but I think, you know, then what we're not trying to. Right, to describe what exactly no. it has to be. Yeah, because yeah. you can't. Yeah. Almost guaranteed. Yeah. Somebody's going to come up yeah. with Thank an imaginative idea. <laughs> yeah. in, in the location that you specified here conflicts with the next sentence. <clears throat> it says the storage may be provided in a unit, garage, or basement. And then above that, you already said where it goes. So you got to be consistent. Which is this? No, in a storage area. It says the storage, it talks about the kayak storage. It says with the minimum dimensions, the storage should be located on the ground floor. Then it says the storage may be provided within the individual unit, garage, or basement, or within a common on site storage area. So you got two requirements. Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't do yep. that. Yeah, yep. Should yep. be one. Well, Paul, yep. Paul, Paul was also in the first one to take and said, should. Yeah. <laughs> well, it should mean so it's a good idea. But that's right. It's either shall or. Well, what I mean, I just think we ought to have just one consistent requirement for location. Hmm? I don't, don't want care where. Taking all these things up and down elevators. Mm -hmm. Well, and you're not doing that with the kind. Well, you can't we'll get a kayak put it put it in a vertically. It's no different. Taking your skis and putting them in the water. Or people basically up the stairs, which if they're forced to, they will. So we don't want people doing it. No. No, but those are the short. No, back to the short ones. It won't fit. This is not all. But you can put anything in this storage unit, right? Yeah. 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 That's a whole. Uh, I think it's like, I mean, we're trying, so it's got to be convenient, right? Right. And for these things, and a bicycle, you might be able to make it a little less convenient, but a uh, kayak has really got to be on the ground floor, I think, or even a separate. Yeah, but well, you might have a garage, I mean, you might have a garage park. Well, that one, the application that we took for the, uh, what was the massage therapy, they put, a, they put it in an accessory building and that could be used for oh, that. Yeah. That's a, That's to me would be, you know, so long as you have this minimal dimension, I, I would just say that, yeah, how you're going to do this and, you know, so that it's convenient and frequent enough. I think maybe that's something that we might think with, let's think about is, how many spaces are we like this says 50% of the dwelling units, but maybe if these spaces and I don't know what like per like a number of demonstrate five bikes per apartment or not five bikes, but you know what I mean? Some number that is, and that's why I thought maybe Brian Kent might know those things, or you know, it's obviously, like Steve said, a kayak probably is less frequent. So everyone doesn't need a IAC space. Very well, that's probably getting a little, you know, I don't expect uh, that you're leaving outside. <laughs> Put it on the balcony. I don't know if we can go there, but some people have some fish, some people have a flying gym or something on the Lido. How far are you going to go? No, 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 that's, that's, no, but I mean, they're, they're affordable. I you, you've got to rent a space okay, in Spicers so or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're only kind of drawn. Yeah. Three boards only about five or six inches. They're a surfboard or a windsurf. And then um, the only other thing that I was curious about so the out, or oh, maybe we didn't get to that yet the outdoor storage. Bicycles. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to. That's the 
okay, go on, keep uh, yeah, So we've done enough on inside. So we are on Thursday, so we're going to be so what we did here is we revised, revised parking requirements for public assembly. So currently the calculation for open assembly almost doubles the parking space requirement for fixed assembly. So this number was adjusted to calculate more accurately. We also revised, revised the parking requirements for commercial and public recreation indoor and outdoor because um, that was calculating the entire project's entire lot area rather than the proposed development area. So we changed that to um, have more accuracy in the parking requirements there. And then that's going to talk about the revised parking requirement for accessory dwelling units and how that was revised to meet Public Act 21-29. And no more than one parking space is required for an ADU. So I'll just zoom ahead to those sections and we can talk about it. This is the table. Under public assembly. Can you describe what, can you give me an example of what we're thinking? Sure. In the public, what public assembly is? Yeah. Church. Church. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought you were. Yep. Yeah. So um, we took a look at a couple of churches that we've permitted before, and then also standards that other people are using in different municipalities. And um, it makes sense to change the without fixed seats calculation for the minimum to be one space for every 48 square feet and then the maximum being one space for every 36 square feet and that's the calculation of assembly area over 12 square feet per person times one person per spaces so that's how i got to that number um, i kind of backed into it and then i tested it on a couple of the churches and it gave us uh, better numbers for the fixed assembly oh. Yeah. Thing. I mean, it's the thing is we want to meet open and fixed should be similar, um, the number, and so that's the, what we're getting at. The, the parking actually doesn't change. It's just the way you get there. Yeah. Okay. What does the fire code say? Fire code says um, ten square feet per person. I think. I'm just wondering if that does this uh, sort of like relate to that because that yeah, number it's based so the, there's varying um, numbers for square feet per person there's fire code and then there's architects what they use and then there's planners sometimes Ar architects use fire code yeah well, that's it. well so I mean if a building <laughs> doesn't <laughs> fire code yeah if a building doesn't so it would seem like and I hope I'm you know that we should probably design our parking to the fire code or not my car doesn't care about how many cars, doesn't yeah, care about how many exactly. people. Uh, well, but then we know how many people. Oh, so right. the, the number doesn't no, no, calculate no. the same. I it's you. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. Okay, and then people probably mm -hmm. depends on how you when you go to church, right? If there's how more doors. Oh, yeah. It still fits with the average square footage per gotcha. person. So, like the ones uh, it doesn't count to this, but that new uh, CBD place. Um, like the farm, the, the barn parking gets tight. Yeah. Well, no, it is, but it's just, uh, I think we kind of knew that when we were getting into it, it was every little, and then I took away that one little spot by the door, but what are you going to do? <laughs> it actually, and forgive me for digressing. This is this room is public assembly, right? Um, well, this is municipal, but yeah, I mean, it'd be, yeah, I guess you would consider a public assembly. Right. Because I see on the door there, it's, what is that, 68 people? Those are fire, fire, that's a fire, 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 fire code. Code. Yeah, what do you mean? But it doesn't say how many cars you need. Well, I'm trying to find out how many cars you need for, for those people. Yeah. And the calculation looks. All square feet per person. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't, okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Moving on. Good job. <laughs> Next one is commercial and public recreation, indoor and outdoor. So, right, right now, um, we have indoor at one space for every 300 square feet of gross floor area. 
and that's been changed to the to meet the, the same numbers in the last um what we were just talking about so these are changing to the same for indoor um public recreation okay. is that um, a number in uh, item 15 or indoor or outdoor recreation we lined out the thousand square feet there but you have a hundred oh well, it should be a hundred i'm sorry yeah. it got taken out the pdf it's was funky. i know i, I yeah. mean it's just something you want to catch <laughs> thank That's you huh? yeah that should be a hundred so it's one space per 100 square feet of proposed development area plus one space for every two employees mm -hmm. So this is things like the Groton pump track, which we just permitted. Mm -hmm. um, that was a proposed development area, not the entire park. And then um, fields of fire or tree trails. You know, that's a 49 acre, 49 acres. Yeah. And the proposed development area is much smaller than that. So. Yeah, we're not concerned about people who work there. That would or is that included? Employee parking, the two spaces for employees. I think I lost it on that. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, I see that down here now. All right. Minimum is two and max is one. When we do this, are they, how do you come up with these numbers? Is it like a standard somewhere or? I look at different communities yeah, to start, right. and then we pulled um, old permits and just looked at what was done in the past. Right, and ground truth did against the yeah. 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 And Different communities might have different needs. Yeah, then I looked at ones that are similar to us. And then there are planning documents. Yeah, that, no. You know, here yeah, but that, that's going to be very similar. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Parking, parking for recreation and document I could find from planning was like 1952. Oh, so, wow. really have to do some research. Then, just local knowledge, you know, what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Interesting for golf courses, we actually per hole, huh? <laughs> parking spaces per hole. To work, but we're not going to change much. Yeah, I guess how many people are out there? Four some. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to skip the bicycle parking now. So we made a couple of changes here to add in red a residential multi-unit um, mix as well, as well as the other districts listed. And then in the last um, item 8.2-17D internal facilities, we added the facility would be equipped with 110 volt outlet and located on the ground floor. Are there is there really a, a conflict between 17E and 17B? It's because D says you may do it. The other one sort of says you must. And I think the two ought to be you know, related to each other or, or combined into one. Well, I think the must being location and must. Yeah, but, is, Outdoor bicycle parking, and then I think that no one is going to put indoor parking with an outlet on the ground floor if you can get away with doing it somewhere else outside. No, I would no, I mean, outlets for inside, but if, if you can have parking garages that are below the ground, then you might want to do that. Hmm? Is, is that in electricity? Outside, you can do it inside, but it needs to be on the ground floor with an outlet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but some of that, I don't know if you always, in every case, you're always going to be on the ground floor. You can have sub ground parking. You want to the bicycle down. You want to have all your parking and then have the building. 
I just, uh, one other thing about the it kind of still bugs me, as you can tell. But um, who pays for that? Who pays for that electricity? Is that tied to a unit? So, so this section um, addresses bicycle parking for a number of different um, developments, you know, basically requiring people to have a bike rack, you know, if someone is riding to, to the, you know, the big Y or to visit somebody in an yeah. apartment complex. And subsection D here just says that, you know, in lieu of putting a bike rack outside, you could put it inside the building in a multi-unit development. I mean, that's all it is. And if yeah. there's, yeah, it would just be like, you know, electric vehicle parking. Who pays for that? Um, well, that actually is pretty well taken care of. No, no, but the, I mean, at, at the big Y, for example, they could have a credit card reader, right? And, you know, you pay for it. It could be the same for bicycle charging. No, it's that he talks residential use of professional office. Mm -hmm. So if it's Mm -hmm. A common thing, it just goes into your rent or it could, it could, yeah. rent or yep. you know, yeah. overhead that everybody pays. It's uh, probably the same as what you, you know, it's your house, right? Yep. The house yeah. meter. But you're not going to put a big roll. No, and you're probably right. not worth trying to put up a credit card machine for oh. the amount of electricity that you're going to sell. Oh. But I mean, the, the class one chargers for cars are one tenth. That take all day to charge your car, but but um, that's yeah. but uh, um, it's up to the facility to decide. Right. Yeah, but yeah. well, we're making a requirement. Yeah, um, it just says you have to have the one ten hour. So I guess this is separate from what we were talking about before. Yes. Yes, so like you have to provide this other storage space that could be used for a bicycle. But then this is saying that, and see, I just like, I don't like the May, I guess is. Uh, yeah, but who, why would anyone do it? Just because they can't. Perhaps if you're I'm, already having racks inside and you just had five more instead of putting them outside. It just seems like it's, uh, I mean, I, I guess it's the like, I like, I think the thing that triggered me to think about this was the uh, the Sealy School where they had like, I don't know, 300 and something apartments and nine bicycle racks, spaces. I mean, it was really, and, and, uh, and nothing, I mean, the ins, I remember you saying that. Closet, you're gonna to have to put your bike up on a thing like this, you know, because it was really interesting. I don't know if uh, mandating some indoor is appropriate, but it's not mandatory. No, 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 I know, but it just says May. Yeah, it's an option. It's an option. Yeah. The mandate comes from how many spaces you have to have up in 17 May. He just says, well, you, you can put them inside an office building. Or an area where you don't have much more hands. Like you would, like, especially in uh, residential, you're, you're going to put them outside because it's just far cheaper to put a rack up than it is to yeah. you know, square footage, right? That's what you're renting or Unless selling. You, have a you might have a luxury apartment. I'll think about it sometime. Whatever uh, the May is kind of like, or even if it was just even a less amount, but some place where for residential use that it's sort of like expected that a person could store their bike inside always. Just toying with you. And then the, um, and so also the number, I don't know how we feel about the number of spaces where it talked, because that was what I, when I wrote that letter back in January, and it was, there's this big gap between, uh, was it 
five units and, and 50 or something, and there was no increase in the numbers. Was I mistaken? One bicycle rack or 10 bedroom unit or five, two outdoor. 60 single bedrooms because there are because it's tied to our parking spaces and five percent of our parking spaces that's required does that make sense remember this letter i wrote i do and i went back and forth with you and we got it right so what i wrote in the letter was our current regulations do not require a bicycle rack until building has 10 single bedroom units or five three bedroom units at that tipping point two outdoor spaces are required not until there are 60 one bedroom units is a third bicycle space required and i and you and i went back and forth and we calculated it by the number of there's like this big gap there where you don't have any requirement for uh, even outdoor storage of bicycles i need to pull that letter and, and rethink about well it. i know we, yeah. you and i yeah. went back and yeah. forth like three yeah. times yeah. And, I, and i asked yeah. you is, is this correct is yeah. that insane yeah i have it here if you want a copy of it uh, yeah sure so that was that was and it's just that because five percent of the the parking i think it was because of i don't know okay. it, it, well, it made sense or it seemed illogical to me at the time and i think that Maybe it needs an adjustment. And I think that you end up at least at um when uh what's that place <laughs> where I changed Yuki's bicycle? It, it, they have a lot of bicycle racks up there. It seems like every building had one. A lot of bicycles. Yeah, his the one that he was at, there was four bicycles in there. One's covered in a tarp, one's got a nice cover, his had nothing and a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like a grill cover kind of a thing. And that, that's it. Thank you. Um, so we talked about this back in March and the commission decided not to opt out of the new requirements, mostly because Rodney has had the standards for accessory dwelling units since 1992. Okay. Um, so the new legislation that was passed in 2021, um, it's slightly different from what our requirements are. Um, the, the state requires um, ADUs to be no smaller than a thousand square feet right now or 800. Um, they require that there be no more than one parking space for that ADU. Um, what we've done is calculated it based on the number of bedrooms. So if your ADU had two bedrooms, you had to have two spaces. So that's a change that, that you're seeing here. I guess we can turn that page here. Um, um, the, the state law also calculates it based on um, net floor area. Um, our regulations just call out floor area. So, and that's been a, a struggle with um, with the zoning official and with us. When somebody comes in with a floor plan, do you know, do I have to count the stairs? Do I have to count? So having yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, so it adds up. Net, all adds up. Are you going to foot three balls? Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, so you can see in 511A, changed the square footage and added net. Um, under parking, um, it's changed to one off street parking space must be provided for each accessory dwelling unit. Um, we changed accessory apartments to accessory dwelling units. Old language from the old zoning regulations. Um, at the bottom of the page here, we've got table eight. 2-4, which are the parking requirements. Um, and so what we're just doing is, is referencing the section on accessory dwelling and is still look there for the parking requirements rather than trying to add another box. We 
we have fallen making the state guidelines for um, section 5.1 that four the size. Yes, that's exactly right. right. That's right. Because that really increases the size. It does. It goes yeah. to a thousand from eight hundred. When we uh, revised the zoning regulations in 19, we went from 600 to 800 feet. Well, plus it's even uh, additional because if you're going to net them, yeah, you're probably about 70 or 80 square mm -hmm. feet. If you take mm -hmm. the staircase right. and the walls and everything else. Although right. that is what we've been doing. Oh, you've been doing that? Oh, okay. All right. that. And now this just makes it clear. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. That was good. Is there a minimum? Or is that just what the building code says that yeah, you can't build yeah. something less than? Yeah, there's no zoning minimum. Yeah. Oh, this house that was three feet wide. Strange, <laughs> 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 huh? Uh, <laughs> I guess it, was it really was. It was all. It was all glass. <laughs> Any other questions on ADUs? Okay. Okay, so we will um, we'll revise, you know, the regulations, bring another draft, um, probably to a meeting where you have a light agenda, and we go from there. Okay. Great. Anyone have any others? On the zoning changes or new applications. Also, you went dwelling at 99. Right, 99 gold stars. So we have a special permit application to change a hotel to a multi-unit dwelling and then a site plan associated with it. So that's the broad main suites. Mm -hmm. All the building? All of the buildings. A lot of that. Because of all the STRs. Well, no, but that's the second one we've seen. Yeah, but that particular hotel has never kept up with the times. So no. it was oh, it was a big good good point. It just which which one? Actually, it might be in the suites. It was Groton Motor, and a lot of people know it as that Groton in the suites right now. Oh, it's been there. Yeah, Groton Motor. Motor. Yeah, Groton Motor. Groton Motor. Yeah, 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 Groton Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. So they actually have those apartments that exist in you know, these some buildings they built. So they're not they're not technically apartments. <laughs> they are executive no. hotel suites. No, but I meant they're <laughs> but yes, they're, there are they're suites, hotel not hotel regular hotels. Hotel right. Is that what they're talking about? Or the and, whole and the main building. Oh, the mm -hmm. whole building. Oh yes. The whole oh, facility. The whole so what are they going to do with the bar restaurant? Oh. That's a very good question. Bicycle it's, storage. You <laughs> <laughs> could have a giant kayak. Yeah, yeah. Queen Mary size. Not bicycle storage, but size. Yeah, I have, we have staff review scheduled for next month, and that is not clear on the plan. It will be clear before you guys see it. They still in business? No, no, no. There are cars up there. Yeah. Like an annual lunch there at Christmas. Oh, you still do? There's a restaurant still in business. Well, it was when COVID, so I don't think so. I didn't realize it. I thought they'd knock off them. Well, I wonder how they stay in business because they end up with the only customers. Hmm. So we'll schedule the public hearing on the special permit for the December meeting unless, they, unless issues come up and they have to give us an extension. Yeah. We have no referrals. Report of uh, error. I signed the uh, plans for a mystic pizza with top facility this week. We talked about uh, the little property appeal and uh, Thursday, we have a workshop in the Forest Hill. Now, when I read the agenda for them, we want to do cannabis first, but not the data center. Right, I think we'll be able to get through cannabis pretty quick. Okay, okay. Yeah. and then go to data centers. Um, we did that because we just 
given Horsley written all of their answers, and so they're going to compile it. We didn't really have a memo, so. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they wanted needed more time. I, don't think so. I, I just assume when we filled out the questionnaire, yeah. that's what the next thing we talk about. We yeah. they want you want to do canvas yeah. first, and then and then data centers, and then short-term rentals is the time. So keeping it an hour and a half. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, we know we have that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Report a commission. Does anyone on the commission? And I, I just want to thank the staff for the Rostic Drive application, the bicycle storage there. It's a good, you know, I mean, it's not, uh, anyway, thank you. Sure. I, I mean, I have to say, ever since you raised it, whenever we have a multi unit application, we always bring it up, you know, yeah. that we, and no one has blinked. They're all like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, good. It's just yeah. something they don't think about. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that they reject. Well, thank you. We'll put out the, the clock for you. No, no, I don't. I, I, I believe me, I could, I, I could care less about that. I just uh, glad that it uh, is supporting the Yeah, it's supporting the Yeah, it's supporting I see the Spicer Mansion actually got sold. Yeah. Maybe. They haven't signed the papers, but. Right. Hmm? No, we'll do it once more. An LLC? An LLC and Gilton. That has to be owner. Still. Yes, that's yeah, that's the special permit for the conversion from a, an apartment. But I thought, yeah, it was. I mean, that's part of the whole issue that was. That was one issue. But the other that, issue was the allowing, yeah. allowing someone who wasn't staying there to come and use the facilities. Yeah. Diminish the sense of value. Anyone have any other issues? This Report of staff. You just have the updates or application on this piece. Yeah, and just one other thing. Um, in this next budget, we're going to be proposing um, funding for the next POCD update. Okay, it has to be adopted in 2026. Um, so in the next couple of months, I think John wants to have a, a short discussion with you folks, maybe in a workshop about what what you see are the issues. You can kind of. Feel it out before we actually start yeah, getting good ideas on board. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And we've kind of identified a few issues that we think need to be addressed, but we want to hear from you folks as well. Yeah, it would be good to hear from yeah, staff so. okay. yeah. Yeah. Seen... Yeah. And then, you know, do you want this to be a whole new document? Do you want just an update? Well, so we just did it. We can right? it feels like that. Huh? I know. Well, it took so long. To do it. No, but there are maybe just certain sections we want to update. There's some discovery in there. You could issue an appendix to the Is that 10 years? No, I was just thinking this is not a five year update, right? No, it's always the 10 years. Oh, 2026 is what you're that, that's you that's so right. we have to have that the work be done complete. before 2026 exactly. right exactly so that's why that's a complete redo well is it or is it just you know we're getting a couple of topics that you think need to be up there oh, well, we got to make sure that, that something has to be re-adopted we have yeah. to re-adopt it yeah because there is a five-year you can do a five-year you can you can but you don't have to you this have is to, the tenure right well we really have oh, to look at the whole here. thing Hmm? Or at least, well, it's your call. No, I mean, we don't have to have a complex review, but we want to make sure we're happy with it. I think that's what was done in the past, right? This last one was a complete review. It, it was a complete review. Previous to that. Also, also a rewrite. Oh, okay. was it? Oh, oh, I, I was too young. 1990. <laughs> 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 Anyone have anything else? I entertain a motion for adjournment. You've been awful quiet, Kevin. <laughs> so moved. Well, I could have raised my hand at any point, but I mean, what we covered tonight, I thought you guys just did a great job. So. <laughs> you're too yeah, bad. but you're on. You're in a hot seat for I'm Thursday. Right. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm unfortunately I'm going to be up in Vermont, but I'll be there the whole time. I assure you. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Yeah. Do you have a second? No, we need oh, a second. Data centers.
Good night. Good night. Good night.